dear students we are back in the class of geometric design we have been discussing about the cross sectional elements and so far a large number of elements have been discussed in the previous interaction we started with a very specific facility which is a bicycle facility and under that bicycle facility we talked about the various classifications we also looked at what is the width which needs to be provided or what can be the horizontal or vertical alignment features which needs to be provided on different type of bicycle facilities in continuation of that we are going to continue with the bicycle warrants in the today's interaction and then we will speak about the capacity and what needs to be done under the specific conditions is what we are going to look at next and once we have done this particular things then we will be starting with another exclusive facility which is required for pedestrians and under pedestrians we will be looking at the walking facility which is along the carriage way that is sidewalk let us start back with the left over portion of the bicycle facility in the case of bicycle facility when we are going to provide it or when we are not going to provide it is what is being talked here if you look you will find that there are two specific features on the basis of which the decision needs to be taken one is the peak or bicycle traffic as being shown here another one is the motor vehicle traffic now depending on which particular type of a traffic is more as compared to the another one we have two warrants being listed here the first one says that if the peak or bicycle traffic is 400 and more and the motor vehicle traffic is low as 100 to 200 vehicles per hour in that case we should provide a cycle facility the other case speaks of the reduction in the bicycle traffic say 200 per hour and it talks about the motor vehicle traffic as more than 200 vehicles per hour so these are two cases which says that in all of these particular conditions we should have a bicycle facility being provided along with the rest of the elements of the cross section now when we are providing this bicycle facility and when we have talked about that uh, there is going to be a bicycle traffic in terms of the flow characteristics then what should be the size of the facility is going to be defined on the basis of the capacity which we can consider for any bicycle facility now here the values which have been talked they have been borrowed from hcm 2010 which is a highway capacity manual for us and the same values have been reproduced in our own guidelines and the work is going on in this particular area where we can come up with our own values in terms of the capacity of the bicycle lanes or tracks which we have discussed previously now when you're talking about this capacity of a bicycle facility what is the utility of that is that when you talk about the traffic volume and you do a segregation there so you have different type of vehicles available and when you go with those different type of vehicles and the percent composition of those vehicles finally you may find that there is a substantial amount of bicycle flow or there is a flow of bicycle along with the non motorized traffic and we need to probably provide a separate facility for these type of flows and that's where this becomes a demand now this demand needs to be looked at with respect to the capacity of a lane or a track and that will define whether we are going to provide one single lane is it going to be sufficient to tackle this demand or not or otherwise we have to increase the number of lanes here or that means the width of the facility is going to be increased in that direction what it says is that if you have a two directional uninterrupted flow condition then in that the value is being taken as 1600 bicycles per hour per lane and here when we are talking about this lane then it speaks of 1.2 meters wide lane but when it's a one directional uninterrupted flow then this value increases just to double that is 3200 bicycles per hour per lane if you are looking at an intersection conditions in the case of intersection condition the parameter which we look for the design is a saturation flow rate and here it is being talked as 2000 bicycles per hour per lane if that is a case then we should try to provide a separate space for the bicycles which are coming at the intersection and then they should be given a priority so as to cross that intersection and that is what we have looked at in terms of the facilities 
Now the another thing is that there can be certain specific conditions where we need to take decisions. Then what should be the points on the basis of which we are going to take these decisions? The decisions are going to be on the basis of the location of those facilities in the overall cross section of our road system. Are we going to provide them along the footpath? Are we going to provide them just after the bicycle lane or are we going to provide just after the parkings which are there? And after this when you are talking about this section, so we say that we have a footpath here and then there is a parking and then we are talking about the bicycle lane and then we are saying that we have a carriageway which is being devoted to that motorized traffic which is going to be there. So, at this junction are we going to make any segregation? So, what are those conditions which are being given to you whether the developmental impacts are there in terms of restrictions or you have multiple users say being shown in this particular sketch where on the same facility we have pedestrian, we have bicyclist and we have a cycle rickshaw also. And if we talk about the width which is being occupied by them, then the initial values which we can consider other than the buffer which otherwise should be there between the movements of all of these users. So, it is 0.6 meters in the case of pedestrians, 0.75 meters in the case of bicycle and 1.2 meters in the case of cycle rickshaw. And if we talk of minimum of 10 centimeters of a buffer in all of these cases probably we are going to arrive at a minimum value of 3 meters as a facility. But what it tries to say is, is that if these are the conditions which are happening we should try to omit these conditions as far as possible and if it has to be done then it should not be having a length more than 40 meters at, at a particular location. If we can do that then it is good because then the exclusive facilities are going to be there for all of these users. And in that sense when we are looking at all of these things and we have been talking about the restrictions etcetera, can we provide the width which is required in terms of either lane or a track at that particular location where this requirement is arising. What type of thing needs to be provided on the basis of the categorization of an area on the basis of the categorization of the roads on which this either the bicycle lane or a tracks are going to be there or can we work with the path which can be something different than the lane and a track as such or what is the functional requirement for which all of these things are going to be provided. Are we going to look at the simple accessibility to a internal area or we are talking about the connectivity of the spaces across even cities. So, they are all going to define that how the things needs to be provided. Now, one thing which is quite important is that when you are talking about a bicycle and when we say that the people should use bicycle, then what are the points we have to take care of? Probably we have to look at that whether the things are accessible or not, they are safe and secure or not, they are comfortable or convenient in terms of uses. So, there are so many things which probably needs to be looked at and in that direction the very first thing which we may talk about is that the location where the parking is being provided is it accessible or not? It should not happen that the activity area is quite far off from a location where the parking facility is being provided and they are not being connected. In that case the people are not going to utilize that parking facility, they will like to park their vehicles in the activity area itself. Whether that is safe or not, the movements between the spaces are they safe or not, is there a segregation with respect to the motorized vehicles so as to ensure the safety of these people. The locations where this should be provided like the transit stations, junctions, any place of attraction where a lot of activity is going to be there. So, that is the point which we need to take into consideration. Then the next thing comes is the space required and when we talk about the space required we are basically interested in seeing that the whatever is being provided is adequate enough in terms of the spaces for the demand which otherwise is going to be there in that area for the parking of bicycles. And therefore, we need to go for the activity surface and we may come up with a value say we need to provide P spaces for parking today, but then that has to be looked at for future and as well as we need to see that there is always a possibility of a occasional flow 
and that occasional flow can be considered as 20 to 30 percent and therefore some extra spaces should always be there in that area where the parkings are being provided. Another important issue is the security of the vehicle when it is being parked in that area. Being a smaller vehicle, light in weight, there is possibility of a theft and this needs to be taken care of. Another is the way the vehicle is being stored in that area. What type of storage facility has been provided? Is it easy to use? It is automatic or a manual in nature? Whether it is with locking system or without locking system? So, there are many things which can be looked in this particular direction also and as you start providing the different type of facilities, it becomes more user friendly and there is a possibility of more people going to use bicycle in that area. If possible, can we provide the shade in that area and that is basically improving upon the comfort conditions within the area when the people are parking and they are more relaxed their vehicle that is bicycle is not being exposed to sun and rain. There may be other two type of variants which are there like bike and ride that means uh, you are using it in combination of a public transport system. It can be a bus system, it can be a train system. So, whether it is convenient to use this particular type of facility in the sense that are we going to park our bicycle there or that the bicycle can be parked within the vehicle or outside the vehicle in which you are riding as a public transport vehicle. So, that is another possibility. So, these two things are also important in that direction when we are trying to provide many other aspects related to bicycle. Here few of the bicycle parking types are being talked about and what you can see is there are different ways in which the parking of the bicycle can be done. It can be in terms of a hanging systems, it can be in terms of the bolted systems, it can be in terms of the racks. Hangings can be on bars or on walls. There are different racks, the racks in the sense that as you can see in this particular photograph where it is a two level rack is being provided. So, it is increasing the capacity by two times, usually provided in those areas where lot of activities are there and people are coming with bicycles or it can be simply a rack in which only the tire is being fixed. So, we need to look at that which particular one is going to be more acceptable, more user friendly and can be provided in an area. What you can see here is that this is the provision of a bicycle on a hanging rail system. So, you have these bars being provided and then the bicycles are being hanged on that. But if you look in the other one, they are being placed on the wall itself. In the third case, what you can find is they are being bolted to the U shaped poles which have been provided here or in this case only the tire is getting inside. So, that sort of a rack is being provided or it is a sort of a multi level car park as we talk. Similarly, here you can see that is a, a good parking system where lot many bicycles have been parked all along and therefore, the total amount of space which otherwise could have been utilized outside in a scattered form has been omitted. So, all of these things needs to be taken care of when you are talking about a bicycle facility. So, with this we come to an end to the bicycle facility. Now, let us talk about another exclusive facility and that exclusive facility is related to the pedestrians. So, when we talk about pedestrians, how can we define that who is a pedestrian? So, here anybody who is either walking or sitting or standing in the public space or a person who is utilizing any assistive device so as to get a mobility which can be in terms of a stick, in terms of crutches, in terms of wheelchair or it can be defined by way of the any age group or gender. So, age groups when we say we can say that can be children, than uh, teenagers, adults, elderly persons or there can be people who have different abilities who are working in different areas or who have nothing to do with a particular area, but they are still standing there as a people watcher. So, all of those who are just using their legs and or an assistive device in a that particular area, they are pedestrians as such and that is what is being shown when you look at at the bottom where they are differently able people moving around using different type of devices along with the 
normal person who may be utilizing that space for walking. Now, when we talk about these pedestrians, then what are the different type of movements which are possible? The very first thing is that the people may be walking along the carriageway. So, when we say that this is my carriageway, so there is a possibility of providing a sidewalk here as well as a sidewalk here and people can move in either of the directions on this particular sidewalk. There may also be a possibility that the carriageway has been provided, but there is no sidewalk and what we have is a shoulder on either of the sides and the people may utilize that also. Or the third case is that nothing has been provided and therefore, the people are moving at the side of the carriageway itself. So, anything is possible, it all depends whether the facilities have been provided specifically for the use of pedestrians when they are interested to walk along the road or they are not being provided. We are mainly interested with the raised sidewalk condition which is an exclusive facility being provided for the pedestrians to walk along the carriageway. Another case can be across the carriageway movement. So, when we talk about the across the carriageway movement, it means we are talking about the movement in any of this direction depending on whatever type of activities are there on either side of this particular carriageway or a road. This may happen at the same level at which the carriageway is being provided and usually these are being provided in terms of the zebra markings. So, they may be at the same level at which the carriageway surface is there or they can be increased in their height and in that case if we have a sidewalk here and the carriageway is on this side. So, we have say footpath and footpath on this side. So, at a, that particular location we are coming with a facility which is coming at the same level as that of a footpath. So, a raised basically a footpath can also be provided. So, here the person need not to get down or get up in this particular cases or it can be a grid separated condition and this grid separated condition can be say if we are talking about something at this as a road level then we may need to go down and then there can be an underpass here and that is the way the facility is being provided maybe by way of ramps or by way of stairs. So, this sort of a subway can be there or similarly there is a facility which is provided say in terms of a the over bridge and this over bridge can have a connectivity something like this. So, there are different things which are possible and we are going to talk about these things one by one and of course, in this particular interaction we are going to start our discussion with respect to the sidewalks. In some of the cases you may find that there are things being defined as pedestrian streets or precincts. That means, uh, these are the area where the vehicles are not being allowed to move even if you are coming with a bicycle you have to get down, you cannot ride a bicycle, but you can tow your bicycle on the side of you. So, that sort of facilities can also be there. So, this is one another thing which needs to be provided and nowadays in many of the cities these are getting implemented or they have been there say in uh, sector 17 of Chandigarh we have a precinct area, but if you go to say Shillong then whatever MG road they have on which lot of vehicle used to ply that has been already converted into a pedestrian street with a good walking environment as well as sitting environment being provided. So, there are certain things which are happening like that. So, when you are talking about this uh, type of facilities what type of concepts are going to be there and those concepts are based on the provision of healthy streets and healthy environment for the movement. And what it speaks in terms of the guidelines is that we should try to provide a good connected system across the spaces within a city and in that case we are probably going to utilize the internal streets and those internal streets which are interconnected as being shown here in blue will provide a walking network. And this walking network may remove the requirement of moving all along the peripheral roads which are there if you are going to use a motorized vehicle. The another case is that all of the spaces which are being provided they should be equitably 
divided or allocated to different users who are there. At the moment, most of the space has been given to the motorized vehicles. Because of that reason, what is happening is we may find that this much space is being given to the cars only or any such type of vehicle and what you are left with is a very small space which needs to be dedicated to the rest of the users and that should not happen. So, that is another conceptual difference which is coming up in the planning now. Another important thing which we can look at is in this diagram where it gives a hierarchical system of the preferences needs to be given to the different type of users when we are going for a planning. And what you see is that the pedestrians have been talked at the topmost level. So, it is an inverted triangle being provided. So, we are not going into a pyramid form and saying that we have a motorized vehicles which are at the top, wherein in this particular case it says that that should be given the lowest priority. And in terms of priority as we go down, then after the pedestrians we can talk about the non motorized vehicles or bicycles and then the public transportation, then the freight transportation and then the some private or the public systems, the semi public systems which can be there in terms of the taxis etcetera. So, they are going to be at the bottom most level of those planning. So, when we are looking at these things then what are the design principles on the basis of which the pedestrian facilities can be provided is what is being talked here. So, number of factors are there, the very first thing is like accessibility, accessibility with respect to the location where the facility is being provided and whether it is approachable enough or not and whether it is providing the good amount of connectivity or not is another thing which we need to look at not only as a part of accessibility, but maybe as a another factor also. Adequacy is in terms of the size and the width of a facility which is going to be dependent on the pedestrian flow and this pedestrian flow we are going to get on the basis of the surveys being conducted at any of the location. Then the another point can be the continuity of the facility. If the facility is not continuous as we have seen in the previous one where we were talking about the walking network, if that sort of a network is not there and the facility which is being provided is a sort of a PCML in some area it is there, in some area it is not there, then probably the people are not going to use it. So, what we need to have is a movement which is an unhindered movement and people can keep moving all along. Comfort in terms of the use or in terms of obviously walking, livability of the area whether it is improving that particular aspect also in terms of the way the environment looks like or the type of things being provided along with the facility which makes it more livable in sense that only pedestrians are not simply utilizing it for their movement to and fro, but there are some other things also which can be utilized by them when they use these facilities. Reliability of the facility is another important thing. If the people are not having a reliability in a sense that the infrastructure whichever is being provided is available throughout and at the same time it is also usable throughout. If that reliability is not there, then the people will not be interested to use those facilities. Safety and security of the pedestrians, safety in terms of their interaction with the motorized vehicles which are moving alongside on the carriageway, whether the segregation has been done and we talked about one such type of element in our previous interactions where we have discussed about the guardrails and the provision of guardrails at the edge of the footpath and where we talked that it can be 150 mm to 250 mm away from the edge. So, that is one aspect. The security in terms of like uh, whether you have been watched and there is no possibility that somebody comes and do something wrong to you as a pedestrian. So, that is another important thing. So, physical and psychological things needs to be taken care of. The quality of the surface, if it is good then only the working comfort is going to be there. Universality of the design, it should not happen in different areas, different type of designs are being provided and therefore, the pedestrians are getting confused in using those. So, that is an another important aspect we have to take care of and finally, the usability of the system, usability in terms of orientations, usability in terms of the locations, usability in terms of any of the feature and its functional value which is going to be there. All of these aspects together, they are going to provide a very good system if being taken care of. So, if we look at in these directions, then few of the things have been talked. 
what you can see here is that uh, we are talking about a sort of an accessibility or usability here the example is being taken as a bus stop where two types of designs are visible one is a wider footpath is there and therefore we are providing the sidewalk facility or the through facility for the movement of the pedestrians at the back of the shelter for the bus stop in another case they have been merged together in front of the shelter so that is the difference which is going to be there. Of course, the size of the shelter is 9 meters by 2.5 meters in both the cases that is a different aspect we are not going to talk for that at this moment we will be taking up bus shelters under a design of facilities and another module. Now, when you are talking about this type of a movement what you find is that there is an obstruction on this side and there is also an obstruction on the other side when the pedestrians are going to utilize this space here and in the other case the obstruction is not there in terms of a physical feature what it can be there in terms of the people who are waiting there for the bus to arrive. Now, when we are looking at these things then there is one aspect which needs to be taken care of and is defined as a shy distance and this is a distance which is going to be there around an object or an obstacle and depending on what type of those things are being provided what you find as it can be as low as 0.1 meters and as good as 1.2 meters. So, there is a wide range in which this side shy distance can be provided. So, when you are looking at this highest value it is near the traffic signals being provided when you are talking about the lowest one it is uh, in the curved cases and we have discussed about the curve. So, these distances when we are talking that that distance should be considered as an extra distance. So, if you are providing certain width, so if we are saying that this is a development and this is my footpath. So, whatever is the shy distance being provided, so this shy distance and this is the width of a footpath they are separate things. So, this is an extra value to be added. When you talk about the security and safety that is in terms of two elements I already talked about that one is the feature in terms of a uh, interaction of a vehicle which is moving on this carriageway and another one is that you need to be feel secured in terms of the environment in which you are walking and in that reason the illumination is one important aspect that needs to be taken care of. Now, there are different ways in which it can be done as you can see here the height of this pole from where the illumination is coming at the surface of the carriageway as well as on the surface of the footpath is so high that we are being able to get it up to this point as well as this point and that value which should be available is 25 to 30 lux value. Here when we are looking at the same thing there is another way of design what you find is that we have two levels one level is dedicated to the motorized carriage where another level is being dedicated to the footpath. And if you look at the various facilities and the pole height and the spacing here then what we find is that uh, these things are going to vary from 3 meters to 12 meters in terms of a height and the spacings can vary from 9 meters to 33 meters that means the spacing of the poles which have been provided on the side of the footpath or the carriageway. And this is dependent on where we are talking about a footpath or a cycle track or we are talking about a facility along an arterial which is more than 12 meters wide. So, this is a sort of an arrangement which can be there. Another thing which we can look at here is a livability, comfort or usability in terms of the way the facility is being provided or the various things have been assimilated at one location. What we find is, is a wide enough facility being provided here it is continuous in nature, it is being provided with the access from the sides from the property, it is far off from the carriageway. So, the safety has been ensured, the way the development has been done in this area in terms of arboriculture, the plants etcetera gives a pleasant environment. We have the sitting places all along. So, if we have elderly people moving around in this particular facility then they can sit here take rest and again move. So, this sort of a system if it is being provided is more livable comfortable and usable and that is what uh, is uh, a thing which we should try to provide. So, we will be continuing with our discussion in these directions and we will come back in our next interaction 
till then thank you and goodbye